Good morning, everybody. Good morning, all the people online. It's so amazing to have everyone back here. Um, I've got a couple of announcements this morning. Sorry, I took my time to get up here. Um, I had a very committed table tennis competition last night, and I came second. So, <laughs> and injury in the, pl- in the in the in the process. But just a couple of um, announcements. Um, first of all, please remember to wear your mask. That's why I came up with my mask here this morning. Uh, so as we can just uh, adhere to the COVID-19 regulations. Um, please remember to keep 1.5 meter social distance between one another. And also if we can, if we can keep three seats open between, um, between people, it will be great. Obviously, if you're a family, you can sit together. And that's, you're more than welcome to do that. And then also, please want to invite you afterwards. Don't just run off. You're welcome to stay. The coffee lounge is open at the top, and then there's some coffee outside in the parking area if you haven't seen it. Um, that's, um, that's also available. And then also, if you're attending a Sunday service and you want to sign up again, for those of you who are here, for those of you online, and you still want to come, um, there's three ways we can do that. You can do it by visiting our Oak Hill website. You can do it through our app or on our social media platforms. So I really invite you to book your place. It's really simple and easy to access that. And also, remember, our kids' facilities are open. For those who are parents, yes, for sure. For those of you who have got small children, we do have our Oak Hill kids running. So please, you are more than welcome to bring your kids along. They do have facilities available for that, and that will accommodate your kids. Then... Part of our worship is to bless God with our tithes and our offerings. You can do that in three ways. You can either use the the scan, snap scan or zapper code in front of you. Or um, if you're online, you can uh, can do EFT or email finances at Um, um, oakil.org.za. And there's also boxes available this morning. As you walk out, you can throw your cash in the box if you would like to do that. Uh, But before we do all of that, let's just pray for the morning. Father, we want to thank you that we can be together as a family again this morning. We want to celebrate the fact that we can have people in our building. We can be together as a family. We want to thank you for the people that are online, that are with us this morning as well. We really just want to pray a blessing over this morning, Father. We are so excited. We want to pray for Leanne. She's going to share the word. It's going to come across so amazing, Father God, and and we're going to be changed and shifted this morning as we walk out of here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I want to invite you to stand with us. We're going to worship our King this morning. Um, We're going to do a new song. I'm going to introduce a new song this morning. It's called called Battle Belongs. Now, um, I've faced a lot of challenges this last couple of years. And uh, sometimes you see this whole mountain and just stuff that goes wrong. And Sometimes you're so held up with, with what's going wrong, you never see the outcome, but God sees ahead, and He sees the victory that you're going to uh, uh, receive. So, why don't you just sing this with us? Amen.
Yes, Father, thank you that you really are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Thank you that your name is above all names, that every knee has to bow, every tongue must confess that you are the Lord. Thank you that you gave us Jesus, the ultimate price. I cannot even begin to think what that must have been like, but I thank you that you paid everything. And I pray this morning that we would just get quiet step into you right now holy spirit have your way with us you're welcome here with us in jesus name amen Ooh. pastor louis notes from last times yeah just throw those over there good morning everybody lucky me i get to have a little moment now without a mask I'm not going to lie to you, this is interesting, eh? Having to sit with masks everywhere. And I don't even know right now if my lipstick is on my nose or not. So there goes the idea of looking pretty. Um, or if all my foundation is off. Um, yeah, so welcome. Welcome to those of you that are online also. I love being able to see all of you. So nice to see family. I'm going to jump straight into today. We're busy with a series about Jesus and what he did when he was on the face of this earth. Last week, Pastor Louis and them spoke about the fact that he paid it forward. And today we speak about a very interesting topic. Jesus valued people. Now, I think some of you, especially there online, don't switch off now. Because I think what some people think is, oh yeah, of course, that's a given. But is it really a given? Is it really a given for you? Do you really sit there and you know that you are favored valued. And do you know that Joe Soap outside there is valued and favored and he doesn't even know it? So just open yourself up for today's word. What is value? What does it actually mean? I went and looked in the dictionary. It says to have a regard for something in order for it to deserve. Something has importance, worth, or a usefulness. 
to estimate the monetary worth of something, or to consider someone or something to be important, beneficial, and have a high opinion of it. Well, straight off the bat, I realize one thing, how the world sees value and how God sees value, they're worlds apart. His economy versus our economy is very, very different. If I had to ask you this, let me ask you a question. Do you feel valuable? Or do you sometimes feel devalued, like where it says you deserve something? Do you sometimes feel undeserving, unimportant, worthless, useless? Do you feel like nobody would pay anything for you? Do you feel unimportant, unbeneficial? If I had to ask you to go for coffee with me tomorrow morning, which I, I'm not going to be able to have coffee with all of you tomorrow morning, but let's do, uh, uh, you're all valuable. But um, if I had to have coffee with you tomorrow, and we sat at that table and I said to you, who are you? What would you tell me? Would you start off with, I'm a wife? Or would you start off with, I'm a woman? Not a man. Would you start off with, I'm a wife, I've got three kids. Would you throw in, I'm a business owner? Would you throw in, I'm a creative artist? Would you tell me how amazing you are at your job? Or would you go straight with your hobbies? Tell me about your mountain biking and how amazing you are. You can, I don't know nothing about mountain biking, but apparently there's black levels that you can go on. Would you tell me about that? Would you tell me that you like to pickle onions? That's an art form, I'm not gonna lie. Would you go straight with, because you're sitting with the pastor, would you go with, I just want you to know that I do tithe, I am a life group leader, and I do log in online at least three times the month. Or would you tell me about the organization that you belong to? Maybe you'll go straight with your failures. Maybe you'll tell me about your achievements. The reality is, while we're sitting over there, you think that I've got a value system, and I think that you have a value system, and whether we want to admit it or not, there is a structure. Intrinsically, it's inbred inside of us. From the day that we're born, your system may not be the same as the guy next to you. So you guys might have a different value system, but the reality is, is you do have some kind of a system. Several years ago, there was, this can only happen in America, there was an article in a, a newspaper about a bunch of guys that broke into a shop in a department store. And what they did was they broke in, they did what they needed to do, and they left unnoticed. Now, the interesting thing about this is they didn't steal anything. They didn't take a single thing. What they did do is they changed the price tag on every single article that was inside there. The skateboard got the same price as the stick of gum. The stick of gum became a few thousand rand. They went through as much as they could do in that time, changing all of the prices. Now, here's why I say it could only be that could only happen in America, because the next day, everything opened up and carried on as usual. For four hours, nobody noticed that there was a problem. You can imagine, some people were very happy and some must have been really, really angry. But then there was chaos. Absolute chaos. Somebody switched up the value system. And I feel that life on earth is kind of like that. Somebody came and messed up the entire pricing system. He crept in, he did what he needed to do, and he left unnoticed. And he left a great big mess. Where things that are holy we treat as common and things that are common we treat as holy. All of a sudden, our up is our down and our down is our up. And we have no idea. But let me tell you, that, that is the idea of the enemy always, always, always. That you will feel useless, devalued, and that you mean nothing to God. And I want to tell you today, that is not true. So, I'm sure every one of you sitting here today, you want to be significant, right? You want your life to matter. Maybe you're not going to be famous, famous, but I don't think anybody is born and their goal is to be a failure or to be insignificant. I don't, I don't think you're born and it's like, you know what, let me, 
I'd love to fail at everything that I do. I'd love for nobody to ever speak to me. I'd love for nobody to love me. Now, come on. Let's be honest. We all have a deep, deep need to be noticed, to be acknowledged, to have value bestowed on us. Being significant in this day and age, though, is like climbing a slippery slope and somebody's throwing buckets of olive oil down all the time. And we are trying to get to the top and we're trying to get to the top, but we keep slipping and we keep slipping because we cannot keep up with the system. We can't. And every time we think to ourselves, I have arrived, my bank account says I've arrived, my children know how to behave themselves, I've arrived, my husband, hey, I want to say like my husband knows his place, but I know you're all going to get angry. Imagine, imagine that. Everything is perfect. And I'd get to the top of the slope and somebody I'm sure would throw ice bucket in my face and I'd fall all the way down to the bottom because they'll change up the rules. They'll start saying, no, you know what? You need to be lowly. You need to get rid of all of that stuff. That would be the right thing to do. Who gets to decide? Who gets to say that the only hair color is red or black or blonde and not pink? Who gets to say that only the educated and those that have some kind of a degree behind their name, they can walk first? No, God never said that. I was standing in the spa and looked over at the magazine section and I thought to myself, what makes you so significant? I saw Jennifer Aniston there. Obviously, they're talking about her and Brad again and if they are going to get into a relationship. So I'm like, okay, so if you've got something juicy happening in your life, maybe you're valuable. I see the royals, obviously, a lot of stuff going on with William and Harry, but it makes sense. I mean, in the value system, they're royals, right? I saw some people that I know nothing about, especially in the sporting magazines and in the camping magazine, the Vach and the Away. I don't know if that guy's really good at setting up a camp, but I assume that if years from now, we collected all those books and we put them somewhere and somebody found them 100 years from now, they would say, these surely were significant people because how did they make it to a cover of a magazine? Hey? What makes them significant? You know what the system says, what makes them significant is they have a lot of money, a huge house or two. They are physically attractive. And that I just want to say you really don't know because, you know, if it was the Renaissance, I'm stunning. And if it's today, then I need to be half my size. How, how am I supposed to know which one is, what is attractive? If you have an education, if you have social standing family, what about if you are an influencer? And what is it that you're influencing people with? Do you feel valuable with those things that I just mentioned right now? Or do you not have enough money? You're too uneducated. Your home is very small. I want to do, when I was preparing, I was thinking to ask the online guys, if you're sitting there on your couch and you look over at your spouse and you think, <laughs> this is it. Look over there into the garage, maybe the garage doors open, you look over there and your car is just very, very small. Who knows? Maybe you feel devalued. God's economy and our economy is different. And I think there's three things that can make us feel valuable today. Number one, who made you? That's what makes you valuable for Jesus. The creator of the universe took time. He paused before he made the universe and he thought of you. If I had an Apple watch over here now and if I had one of those nice cheap ones for 100 bucks from the Chinese store, which one's more valuable? Rolls Royce or my Mazda 323 that I had? I feel the Mazda might be coming vintage, so who knows? But it's very often who made this? that gives the thing value. Oh, I wanna read the scripture to you, Luke 12, 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap. They don't have a storeroom or a barn, yet God feeds them, and listen to this, and how much more valuable 
you are than birds, than fountains, than the wonders of the world, than the biggest mountain that you can find, waterfalls. If you go into the sea and you see what happens with corals, you are more important than anything that you can find on the face of this earth because he made you. Ephesians 2.10 says, you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for you in advance. Workmanship, masterpiece. Masterpiece. That same word means that you are a poem. It takes a very intelligent person to sit down and write a poem as intricate as what we are. And he must have loved us like crazy when he sat down and thought up every single little part of your being. Scripture tells us we're made in his image and likeness. That t-shirt says, I'm made in God's image and he don't make no junk. If he did make junk, and if he did make something terrible, why would he let the Holy Spirit come and live inside of you? The Holy Spirit is valuable. Before, I, I already told you this, before the universe was in place, he focused on you, you were the object of his love. So who made you? The second thing is what you're prepared to pay for it. My house, I might want to sell it and think, I'm gonna sell this baby for two million. It doesn't mean someone's gonna pay that for it. What is someone prepared to pay for you? God gave everything. If I watch those, um, those shows, oh, I'm running out of time. If I watch those shows where they, where they steal a rich guy's kids, and then he has to get, you know, he has to ransom them back. And then the one guy's like, nah, keep him. Other one's like, oh, I don't have enough money. And then there's the one who's like God, who says, I'll pay everything. I'll give my ultimate. I'll give the most precious thing that I have. And he gave us his son. 1 Peter 1, verse 18 to 19. For you know that it was not with the perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from your empty way of life handed down for you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. You were bought at the ultimate price. And he would have paid it if it was just you also. And then the other thing that I believe makes you valuable is what you can become, the potential that you have. I'm not talking about is Sia Kulisi and his potential better than the captain of the first team for Beaufort West Rugby. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the thing that when Jesus walks past you, he sees things that the world doesn't see. We walk past people, we see nothing sometimes. He sees everything. How do I know that? A few stories. The woman at the well. If you've recently met Jesus and you haven't really read the word, go and read the gospels. This is amazing stuff. You will see how God and Jesus values people in the gospel. So what about her? He changes his entire plan so that he can meet her in the middle of the day when it's warm to tell her you are valuable. Stop believing the lies that the people tell you. Go and sin no more. What about the woman who's caught in the sin of adultery? Everybody, I mean, if he wanted to submit to the standards of that day and age, he would have said, yeah, okay, let's stone her. But he saw something that other people didn't see. He saw value. Go and sin no more. Here's another one. This is my favorite one. The woman who's bent over double in the synagogue. Now, can you imagine this for a second? Jesus is coming to preach in the synagogue. First of all, she's a woman. She shouldn't be in the building right now because she is also crippled. She should be living outside of town. She's sick. She's ill. She came in because she knew maybe I can have a moment with him. So you can imagine he walks in. Everybody else is standing and she's folded double. There's not a chance that he could have seen her. But Jesus has a value magnet. He's got like a value alarm that goes off when he's around something valuable. And the Holy Spirit says, let's do something about it. And he sees her and he calls her and he takes her to the front, to the place of the most value. And then he heals her. What about Simon Peter? You know, the word Simon means shifty as sand. And if we read the New Testament, there's many times where he's shifty as sand. 
And Jesus says to him, I'm looking inside you and you're a rock. And I'm changing your name. Zacchaeus, sitting up in a tree, short guy, wants to see something. Jesus walks past and he says, you're a tax man and you think that that is valuable. I want you to come down because I'm going to show you a real value today when I have lunch with you. Each one of these people are sinners, dirty, defects. And he takes his time to go find the value and change their world forever. Maybe you're defective. Maybe you've been found guilty. Listen to the scripture, Romans 5 verse 8 says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for you. While you were still defective, you had value. I want to run to a story quickly. I hope I can do it fast, fast. Jesus was on the cross and there were two rebels next to him. The one carried on slandering him and the other one had a change of heart. And in Matthew 27, I'm going, to, I'm going to paraphrase, so don't put it up. It says, two rebels were crucified with him, one on the right, one on the left. It says, people walked past, they hurled insults. They said, if you really are the son of God, how come you can't? You said you were going to bring down the temple, you can't even get yourself down from a cross. They said, if you really are a king, why are you up here? Never mind, they took his clothes, they spat on him, they beat him to a pulp, they did terrible things with him. And then it says in verse 44, in the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. So the two guys on either side were also saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of them changes his mind. One of them turns around and says, when you go to the kingdom, of heaven today, will you take me with you? What happened for that drastic change? He was a thief. We don't know what exactly he did, but we know that he stole stuff. I don't know if his father maybe rejected him as a baby. I don't know if he had a bunch of illegitimate children. I don't know if he had a job. I don't know if he killed people when he was stealing. I don't know if he stole just because he needed or if he stole because he had greed. But what I do know is he was caught he was sent to trial and he was found guilty. The wages of sin is death. We've been caught. We've gone to trial, if it's really the type of trial in front of the enemy. And we've been found guilty. But lucky for us, somebody's prepared to pay the ultimate price to get us out of jail. We've got the get out of jail free card. So that brings me to this thought. Can Jesus value us even if we are a sinner like that guy on the cross? Remember, he's, he's being crucified. In that day and age, if you crucified, that's a shameful death. You did something very shameful. You were either heretic, you hurt people. That is why you are getting the shameful death that you're getting, so that people can spit on you and mock you and shame you before you are going to go wherever it is that you're supposed to go. How long did he stand next to, or, or was he on the cross next to the Prince of Peace before he started to change his mind? I think he was hurling insults, and the longer he was in the presence of real love, unconditional love, he started to change. He saw and he heard certain things. Because you know what? I think if I was hanging there, they say hurt people, hurt people, I would start flinging some insults of my own. Especially if I'm Jesus, which means I could have a word of knowledge, which means I could say some things about you guys that would shame you in front of everybody. But he didn't do that. You know what he did? He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Boom, the thief thinks. How do you say that? You're broken, you're bloody, you're torn to pieces. These people are terrible to you. How is it that you can be so nice? And then he shows concern. He says, mother, and he talks to John. He says, this is your son. Disciple, this is your mother. He was worried about them, not about himself. Come on. That's next level. In his pain and all the cruelty, he still had concern. And I think this thief started to see what real unconditional love looks like, what real value looks like. And you know what? Then Jesus says to him, I tell you today, because he asks, remember me when you come into the kingdom. And he says, 
I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Why would Jesus give him a place of honor at the banquet table? Because you know what he realized that day, the thing that you and I need to realize today, our worth, our value, and Jesus' love does not depend on what we can do for him. That guy never had a life group, never tithed, never attended church, never worked a day in his life, ever. And he's gonna be in paradise just because he exists. Because of who made him, what he was prepared to pay, and where the potential was inside of him. So I wanna ask you, Isaiah 43 says things like, God calls you by name. You're precious to him. His love will never be shaken. Ephesians 3 tells us his love is wide and it's deep and it's amazing and you can never ever buy it. You won't find it in a shop. It's yours to have because you already have the bank account. The basis of our personal value to Jesus is not your possessions. It's not your talent. It's not how other people esteem you. It's not your reputation. And I can see for some of you, it's maybe gliding off right now, but I need to tell you, this is such a simple word. But the stuff that you write on your CV, it's nice, but it's not really valuable. Jesus brings value. And listen to this sentence, because I think this is the big one. God's love for you and his choice of you. Do you realize that he chooses you every single time because you are valuable? That's what makes us valuable. His unconditional love and his choice of us. His choice to send his son to pay the ultimate price. What if in the next week or two, we pull away from the fake pricing system? I'm not saying go on lockdown level five. I'm saying just get quiet and ask God, who made me? Who paid for me? What is my potential? What if we just ask him to speak to us with that voice of love? 2,000 plus years ago, a woman at a well, an adulteress, a taxman and a thief encountered the love of Jesus and they stepped away with value. You can have it too. And then the last thing I wanna tell you is, there's somebody standing in checkers across the road right now or in the Woolies, or in the Chinese shop, and they do not know who made them, they do not know that they are valuable, and they did not know, they don't know that Jesus would die for them. So it's time for us to receive it, believe it, and get out there and start telling some people, because there's an impending doom waiting for them. They don't know this. They're still on the cross and they don't know. And all you have to do is make eye contact, buy a cup of coffee. And we can make eye contact very easily now. You can have love in your eyes. Eyes are the windows to the soul. Come on, we can love people. We don't have to touch them, but we can say things like, we can be kind, gentle, patient. Let's pray. Father God, as we sit here, even those that are online and those that are here in the building right now, I pray that you would come and arrest our heart for how precious we are. I feel, Father, that some people do stand here and they've been believing lies for years and years and years that they are junk and they are rubbish. But they say, yeah, I think I might be valued. And today I pray that you would confront their heart. The hard hearts that say, I'm okay, you're not okay, because today you need to know that the ultimate price was paid for you, and there's no way you can buy it. Father, I pray for that conviction. I pray you to overwhelm us right now with your love. And then I pray, Father, for the courage to get out there and show some people that they are valuable too. That one sheep that wandered away, the prodigal son that went away, the woman that was bent, all of that, sinners, defects, guilty. We don't have the right to judge them, Father, and I pray we'll get out there and we'll show them your value for them. I thank you for your precious son.
Thank you that you thought about us, that you made us, that you paid the ultimate price and that you always believe in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you to those of you that joined us online. I trust you'll have a week filled with love and value and we'll see you next week.